This is what it was like about 100 years ago. And you'll see even now the landform has changed. This is predates a whole new key being constructed here. If you look at some of the earlier or current day, there's a large key that's constructed. So all of that material was brought in over the period of about 100, 150 years constructing this land. Some of the fill was of questionable quality. So we have that legacy to deal with, as well as the industry that was there. Many oil refineries, and you can see on the photo all of these large tanks that were in the area. That's left an impact on soil and groundwater. One thing you see in this drawing is the environmental conditions. So with that industrial heritage of refineries, waste recycling, recycling activities, metal factories, all of that has left some impact on the footprint of the land. This drawing is showing the investigation point. So when you're at the surface walking around, you can't tell what's underground. And we use uh, investigation programs to collect soil and groundwater samples, analyze them in the laboratory to identify what contaminants. We've had hundreds of borehole investigation points through this land to understand where and how deep the contaminants are. It's a critical part of our investigation that we had to understand critically where everything is in order to construct a river through it. With those oil refineries, one of the things that we found is, you know, an infrastructure that was in the ground with the oil pipelines and the large tanks had led to some leakage and some spills. And as a result, not only is the soil and groundwater impacted, but we also have oil that's in the subsurface. And you can see some of the photos here, the type of oil that we have. And the, the shading on this drawing is showing where we likely have this type of oil in the ground. So again, the, the worst area is right in the river, so we have that opportunity to excavate during the course of the construction, but we have other areas outside that. So that's something that we had to deal with in the construction and in the management of these lands. We've also done some bench scale studies and pilot tests of different remediation processes. So we started that process a couple of years ago to evaluate what can we do to address some of the soil and groundwater contamination. So I'm going to go through a couple of the uh, pilot tests that we ran down on site, wrapped up early part of this year for most of them. So we started last year, but we started it even earlier, about a year ago with the bench scale study. So bench scale is in the laboratory where they collect samples from the site and then they take them to the laboratory and then they test them and see if they've got good treatment efficiencies. And a pilot test is actually in the, in the field, so it's on site. So they set up on site to, to test whether their approach will work. So one of the, one of the, and I'm going to focus just on the in situ ones, so that would mean things that would work um, below ground. So it's not excavating the soil and then treating it, it's seeing if there's some ways that we can treat the contamination in ground. So the first one is a smoldering process, and it's, I'm going to use a lot of uh, food related terms, but it's very much like your barbecue where you're smoldering to get your charcoal going. And that's what they do underground. And in this case, the interesting thing is that the contamination is your fuel. Uh, here in some areas we have high contamination and it acts as a fuel. So it supports the smoldering process. And through that, they can get over 99% removal of the contaminants in the ground. So pretty significant. And in the pilot test, we had comparable results. The picture on the far right here is actually clean soil. And the, the clean soil looked like beautiful beach sand, to be honest. And the initial soil before treatment was very oily, dark, and quite odorous. Another approach we looked at was, again, in situ in ground, um, where we were injecting surfactants, another cooking term, soaps. So essentially, we were putting soaps into the ground to try to liberate that oil. In the same way you're in your, when you're washing dishes, you're using soaps to try to get the oil off. That's what we used in ground. Um, and so in, in that, you can see through these photos how we were getting and removing the oil. So they would put the soap into the ground and basically extract it afterwards to try to get this liberated oil out of the soil matrix. And then after that, they did another treatment with an oxidation process, like a hydrogen peroxide where they're oxidizing any residual contamination. So they had good performance in this one too, um, but it, it didn't uh, go all the way to actually getting a full treatment. Another approach was this uh, block and absorb. So it's where you're using activated carbon, carbon, just like in your Brita filter, another cooking term. 
um, and also cement. So you're using the cement and carbon together to immobilize the contaminants. So they, they did a couple of processes where they were injecting this into the ground and also mixing into the ground. And you can see in the photos on the very far left, it's very oily. If you look at the soil closely, it's quite oily there. And as they added their cement and their carbon mixtures, it, be, it immobilized the mass. So it really, really did a, a good job at uh, kind of sticking the contaminants in place. And the last one that we worked on was similar to that, but using only cement. So to see if the cement alone could immobilize the mass. So with all of those pilot test and bench scale studies, then our consultants went through and looked at uh, the treatability, the feasibility, and the, and the cost to determine what the best approach going forward was. And what we've selected was that, that last one, which was the cement stabilization, where they're adding a low percentage of cement, like five to 12% cement, into the soil matrix, either mixing it or injecting in some ways to immobilize the contaminants in place.